On November 3rd, 1917, during the First World War, at around three in the morning, in the trenches outside of Artois, France, Corporal James Bethel Gresham came out of his bunker after news of a German raid. He was immediately confronted by a soldier and said, don't shoot, I'm an American. And the German soldier replied, it's Americans I'm looking for, and fired a bullet directly between his eyes. This story is like thousands of other World War I deaths, but what makes it particularly interesting is that on that night, outside of Artois, France, James Bethel Gresham became one of the first three American battle casualties of the war, and by many accounts, was the very first. If you're from here and you know some local history, you might recognize Gresham's name. He's an Evansville native. His body came home in 1921. 20,000 people attended his memorial service. And just to put that in perspective, about 16,000 people attend the average Indiana Pacers game. His name was written in the death records in gold ink, the first one ever written that way. Incredible, right? So I was looking at some old newspaper articles about Gresham, and this piece caught my eye. It's from 1922, the Indianapolis Star, and I know that you can't read it from there, um, but what it says is that a memorial to Gresham is underway, a project is in the works, and that he's going to be temporarily buried at Locust Hill, a local cemetery. This is his grave today, at Locust Hill, still. It's a government-issued headstone, you wouldn't notice it if you weren't looking for it. And even up until 1926, his grave was marked by this, a small mason jar with a note in it. And this wasn't bad reporting by the Indy Star, this wasn't a one-time promise that went awry. I'm going to show you some headlines from local Evansville papers from the 20s and 30s. This one's from August 21st, 1924, the Evansville Courier. Gresham Memorial is to be a national one. Campaign for $1.5 million will be made. This one's from August 25th, 1924, the Evansville Press. Memorial for first soldier to fall in Evansvillian on way to reality. This one's from the Evansville Courier again, November 26, 1936. Plaza Shrine proposed for Gresham. So what happened? Over and over again, some kind of commemorative form is promised, and yet we still fail to see any kind of end result. Now, I want to shift gears briefly and talk about how we as a society remember things, our public memory. The foundational work on this concept is by John Bodner. It's called Remaking America, and I highly recommend it, especially if you're from Indiana, because he uses Indianapolis as sort of his case study. And Bodner says that Memory is this fluid, volatile thing, not a concrete set of facts about the past. And he theorizes that the way we as a society remember things actually has a whole lot to do with what's going on in the present. Memory, for Bodner, functions in a variety of ways. It could be used to push a political agenda, used to shape the discourse around a certain event, um, basically shifting and changing memory, or even just highlighting certain points over others, could produce real effects in society. So what I found out about Gresham was incredible to me for two reasons. First, his memory only became an afterthought when something else important was happening in the present. And second, these things that were happening were some of the most important events in the city's history. In 1922, a year after his body comes home, Mayor Benjamin Bossie tragically dies at the age of 47. Now, if you're from Evansville, you've almost surely heard of Bossy. Um, Bossy High School, Bossy Field. And the truth is that he was probably one of our city's most influential mayors. He was slated to run for governor. He was a landslide winner in basically every election, a public works guru. And he was the head of memorial, or Gresham's Memorial Committee. Now, I would argue that it was more the shock of losing the mayor than the actual loss of leadership on the project that led to Gresham's memory to be kind of pushed to the back burner, but it's still not an inconsequential thing. And even this, the loss of Bossy, wasn't enough to totally kill Gresham's momentum. Through the mid to late 1920s, we see more proposals, and in 1929, the Great Depression hits. Again, tragedy in the present taking priority over our memory of the past. 
1936, as we saw earlier, there was a proposal to put him at Dress Plaza, right on the river. And in 1937, the Ohio River floods, causing $17 million worth of damage. That's in 1937 dollars. One third of the city's homes are destroyed. And the proposed site for Gresham's Memorial is flooded. By the 1940s, Evansville is an integral part of the industrial war effort. And in the midst of an even bigger Second World War, the idea to commemorate this hero of the first had become an afterthought. The title of my talk is Saving Corporal Gresham, Public Memory Then and Now. Mostly because I love puns in my titles, <laughs> um, but also because I think that understanding how we shaped our past 80 and 90 years ago and how we shape our past today is incredibly important. So the questions that I want to ask you are why do we remember the things that we do and what do we forget? Maybe we forget Gresham. Maybe we just remember different things. But the point that I want to make is that it wasn't the past that affected his memory. It wasn't what he did, how long he served, how he died. It was the present, almost exclusively the present. The events that a society experiences in the present can quickly take priority over its memories of the past. And once again, these aren't our individual memories. They're our collective memories, our public memory. We, as a community, as a city, as a nation, as a state, have the ability to remember and forget things based on what we choose to talk about. I think a great way to figure out what people were talking about 80 or 90 years ago is newspapers. Today, it's probably social media. For the first time in our history, we have an incredibly extensive digital archive of everything we're talking about at any given moment. But think about how quickly we can forget. A news story can be gone in less than an hour. We have no idea of knowing what will stick in the public mind and what will be lost. Even things that may seem important can be quickly replaced by other big events. But that's also the beautiful thing about memory, is that it is volatile, that it is fluid. Sometimes all it takes is a reminder to help people remember what they've forgotten. So if you're holding on to something, if you remember something that you think that other people have forgotten, say it, tweet it, post it, share it, bring it back into the public discourse. Talk about it and refuse to be silent. Because that's how memory works. It's a collection of what we're talking about, of what we say. And that's why I'm here today. To bring the memory of Corporal Gresham back into the public discourse and to encourage each and every one of you to find your own lost piece of history. Remembering things like Gresham is important because they add value to our culture. They deepen our understanding of the past. And they serve as a symbol that there may still be hope to recover what we've lost. I hope that this time we can save Corporal Gresham. Thank you.